Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, still officially late summer, late summer evening. I love the late summer evenings, although dark is falling earlier and earlier. Here on Thursday, I believe it's September 8, 2022. So uh, we're celebrating. We, we have two new... Uh, Two new milestones this week at Collapse Chronicles. We have hit 5,000 subs and 2 million views. 2 million, 2 million people have tuned in to me uh, doing whatever it is that I do. So I, do, I really do appreciate the, my subs and uh, my 2 million viewers now. But anyway, so we're going to celebrate by doing two short sweet chronicles of the collapse night so i just was over there on the left side of the dial checking in with columnist uh caitlin johnstone with her rant today titled our entire civilization is fake and stupid you can uh, go over there and, and find that uh, elsewhere. But, you know, Caitlin Johnstone and so many of the people on the alternative media always talking trash about the corporate mainstream media. And I am not one of these people. I just want to make it clear for the record as a former journalist who kind of... I was kind of on the border between the mainstream and the alternative media and, and my own um, journalism career in a former life. Had my feet kind of in both worlds. Uh, I am not the one, I, I am not someone who just totally trashes everything that's on the, the, the mainstream media. Uh, I think there's some pretty good stuff on the mainstream media. So, uh, the biggest story on the mainstream media today, uh, the number one story uh, on the uh, mainstream media, many versions of it, is about the Doomsday Glacier down there, the Thwaites Glacier. Uh, you know, collapsing much faster and much sooner than uh, previously thought. Uh, and, and I don't understand how the mainstream corporate media talking about this, what is in it for, you know what I'm saying, I guess Maybe it's promoting the bright green lies that, that we're going to switch from fossil fuels to green energy and that a Florida-sized doomsday glacier is suddenly going to refreeze. You know, other than that angle. But anyway, I figure every doomer on the planet is uh, talking about that story. So I'm actually moving to the third biggest story on the planet, according to Yahoo News. Now, people have told me, like, like Sam, you do understand that your news feed from Yahoo News is not the average person's news feed. It's not like everybody on the planet's number one story is the doomsday glacier or the number three story talking about climate tipping points is that Yahoo News has noticed over the years the kind of stories you're interested in and that the vast majority of people will never hear about the doomsday uh, glacier because you know they're listening to celebrity news and, and all of that crap so I do understand that uh, Yahoo News has figured out that I am a doomer and they are sending me stories that doomers would be interested in, uh, which is why it is so easy for me to do, it's a lot easier for me to do my job now because Yahoo News is saying, oh, this guy is a doomer. 
So feed him doomer porn. Keep him happy. Feed him doomer porn. You know, feed 99% of uh, the planet celebrity porn. Uh, but anyway, even with that understanding, uh, this is right out of Reuters News and good for Reuters News. Third biggest story on the planet, according to the Doomer bots at Yahoo News, that you can draw your own dots between this and the Doomsday Glacier. Reuters News, short and sweet story. Climate tipping points of coral die-off and ice sheet collapse closer than thought. We have another faster and worse than previously thought story. Okay, take it away. This is Gloria Dickey. Gloria Dickey writing for Reuters News this morning. <clears throat> when might the world's bleaching coral reefs pass the point of no return? When would warming temperatures cause the Greenland ice sheet to collapse and trigger severe sea level rise? These worrying scenarios could happen sooner than expected, according to new scientific research. Uh, and then they link you over to the, you know, the 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 story from the journal science.org is so this is kind of a distillation of the science dot i probably should have gone on to the real article that we're going to let reuters news digest the science.org study all right for more than a decade Climate researchers have been monitoring 16 tipping points. Now, this, these tipping points are not to be confused with the nine planetary boundaries. Okay, we're talking the 16 climate tipping points. You know, climate is just one of the nine boundaries. Okay, so this is like the one planetary boundary that everybody's talking about while nobody's talking about the other eight, breaking it down into 16 tipping points, which are defined as environmental thresholds beyond which the global climate system could spiral toward a dangerous state precisely how much global warming it will take to breach these thresholds, however, has remained a question mark. The 2015 Paris Agreement aims to keep temperature gains well below 2 degrees Celsius in her... in her... in her... Uh, hopes <coughs> of averting the worst consequences of climate change. But a brand new analysis of more than 200 research papers on tipping points finds it is possible that the world could hit some of these thresholds at the level of warming, 1.1 C, we're already experiencing now. Yes. This is David Armstrong McKay, a co-author of the study published this morning in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Quote, we can see some potential early warning signals. Already, the Greenland ice sheet 
is showing signs of destabilization with lots of melt and there are potentially early warning signs that the Atlantic Ocean circulation might be slowing down, said McKay, who works at the University of Exeter in Britain. The latter, you know, sometimes known as the AMOC, you know, it's the Gulf Stream, you know what we're talking about, the AMOC. The latter is crucial in moving heat from the tropics into the northern hemisphere. A shutdown would trigger widespread cooling around Western Europe and Eastern North America. So this is how, uh, you know, when the AMOC slows down and uh, things get colder in areas that are now being kept warmer, you will hear these Alex Jones right-wing climate changing clueless morons, uh, you, you know, laughing about it's getting colder in Western Europe and uh, Eastern North America because they do not know, they do not care to learn the science of what is happening. Okay, so that's, I guess that's two of them, uh, these tipping points that are already. Uh, for this first scientific study to test the 16 tipping points against different warming scenarios, the team of international scientists poured over the data and findings from past studies five tipping points. So of the 16 climate tipping points, five of them could happen now. The team finds so right now you can uh, already you can look for the disintegration of the West Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets which, you know, includes the Doomsday Glacier, which was the number one story. Don't forget coral reef die-offs, collapse of the Labrador Erminger Seas Convection. You know, this is one of the, uh, you know, one of the ocean circulations. And do not forget number five, abrupt permafrost thaw, abrupt permafrost thaws, which some people call the methane bomb. When uh, the permafrost goes down the toilet overnight. So these could happen now. So looking at that last one, which is a favorite of mine, Arctic permafrost thaw, you know, one of the five that could happen any day and is happening, come on, be honest, it is happening, would, meaning would release, meaning is releasing huge amounts of carbon into the atmosphere. So if it's not happening today, it will be happening next summer. I suggest you Google Pingos, P-I-N-G-O, and tell me that abrupt permafrost thaw has not already crossed the tipping point and the methane bomb isn't blowing. Anyway, let's see. Coral reef die-offs would obliterate the marine food web. McKay stressed, quote, at the moment, meaning right now, today, at the moment, these five tipping points are possible rather than likely. Possible rather than likely, but it's definitely concerning. This is called backpedaling. 
okay? This is called a man who wants to see his name printed in the media. Who, whoever this McKay dude is, he knows damn well that every one of these tipping points have been crossed. That the, uh, that the permafrost is melting, coral reefs are bleeding, you know. This man knows damn well that they're not just likely but happening, but he's not about to sing. You know, so this is at 1.1. 1 .1. At 1 1.5 C, you know, which is like next week of warming, another five of these 16 tipping points would be reachable so they don't even break those down. The next five. So when we, if you believe the 1.1 is already bringing on five, we go another 0.4 C, another five climate tipping points are going to kick in earlier than previously expected. And I don't know when it's going to take for those last six. Earlier this year, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change stated that the risk of climate, climate tipping points becomes high by around 2C of warming. Again, uh, the IPCC knows as well as anybody uh, that, that uh, this collapse is happening faster and worse than previously. Though I was listening to some interview with Peter Wadhams yesterday. I wish I had paid more attention to it. I can't link you to the video where he stated the IPCC is committing a crime against humanity by flat out lying about the amount of sea level rise built in to the cards over the next few decades. Uh, Peter Watt, climatologist Peter Wadham is making the claim that the IPCC is deliberately underreporting the threat of sea level rise, you know, th from things like the doomsday glacier cracking up and Greenland ice sheet melting, calling, and I think he called, said that the IPCC is guilty of crimes against humanity. They're lying through their teeth and they know it. Anyway, this is marine biologist Hans Otto Portner at the Alfred Wegener Institute in Germany who co-chaired that IPCC report, quote, while the IPCC has formulated more cautiously, yes, we are, meaning folks at the IPCC, we are all aware that 1.5 warming does not take us to a safe haven, close quote, in the world, I guess, according to the IPCC, the world is on track to warm 2.6C by the year 2100. Um, and what you're seeing this summer is what they're calling 1.1. So, uh, who knows? Pick a number, throw a dart. Uh, anyway, I need to get out there and make another five-gallon bucket raid on my uh, tomato crop. Good Lord, guys. This is the biggest tomato harvest I might have ever had in my life this year. Uh, anyone coming to the Bugs in a Jar Doomer Meetup next week, uh, I hope you enjoy tomatoes. We're going to have a 55-gallon drum of salsa, BLTs coming out our ears. 
but uh, I mean they're pouring in so I need to get out there before dark and grab me another 100 of these beautiful homegrown organic garden fresh beefsteak tomatoes and enjoy them while I still can highly suggest you come join us at Bugs in a Jar Farm and enjoy the tomato harvest while you still can bye guys alright little guy little dog we gotta go get some pick some tomatoes before it gets too dark.